praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine, shall one in peace, may that be into the elect of the nation of Israel. Now I want to get into Isaiah 63, commentary by David Guzik. Yeah, he's we've gone back and forth. Well, not yeah, back and forth. We've really gone forth <laughs> pushing the gospel using certain ones of his videos and where he yeah, messes up or slips, as it were, in his, which he's not correct most of the time. You know, some things he gets correct, and we'll show you. You know, look, this guy's deeper than you Israelites, but certain of the ones, yeah, he gets it wrong. Bear with me, let me turn up, not turn up, turn off my hotspot, mobile hotspot. So. It says prayer from captivity, you know, which we you know, we are all in captivity. If you're an Israelite, you're in captivity. Even if you're you're ruling over a land, put in certain positions. So you know, Daniel was, for example, was put in a position of governance. Well, he was still he was still in captivity, man. You know, he was still not not you know, in his land where we are. We will eventually rule and are meant to be ruling you know starting off i'm referring to of course the story of shadrach meshach and abednego which is um hananiah michel and azariah which are their actual hebrew names but anyway that's beside this point you know, it's not beside the point but it's beside this point so isaiah 63 and verse 1 it says and i'll just read it as he you know as he's written it I might add in here in the quote scriptures, and pull scriptures, we'll see. Anyway, without further ado. 1. Isaiah 63 and 1. A question and an answer. Who is this? Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? This one who is glorious in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength. I who speak in righteousness mighty to save. And for the most part that is you know, word for word. What it says in the King James Version there also. You know, apart from your know, come cometh, um, and I said it, it says this that this, I think it says this that is glorious in his apparel rather than this one, but f for the most part, you know, this translation is as we read it and what we tend to read the King James version. But of course, it's more more important to see what the languages that came before said, primarily the Hebrew. All right. So he says, <laughs> "A." Who is this that cometh from Edom, or comes from Edom? This prophecy describes the day of the Lord's vengeance. All right, so David Guzik, you know, is E around? Is Edom around? Who is E Edom today? Yeah, I'm gonna have to say the full Edom. You know, whether they clip it or not, that's up to the heavenly Father. He has come from. Well, let's read this. You know, this prophecy describes the day of the Lord's judgment. All right, sorry. Uh, the day of the Lord's vengeance, which also is judgment. Yeah, so where is he where is he going and why? For what purpose? Edom, why Edom? It says he has come from Edom in the sense that he has judged there first and now comes to the land of Israel. Now he is gonna judge the the land of Edom, right? The the land that Edom have created a great kingdom in. Yeah, you know, a Babylon the great kingdom. And yeah, that is what it's talking about when it talks about Bosra. That's the Echi. I think it's about to say that actually. So he's going into that. So I'll hold that. The Lord will not bring that in a second. So he has come from Edom in the sense that he has judged there first and now comes to the land of Israel. As the Lord arrives, he is, and then it's about to quote the scripture, he is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. It says, I, with that garments from Bosra, is also significant. Yeah, we'd agree with you on that. It says, Bosra was the capital city of ancient Edom. <laughs> As it was, what is there now? Modern Edom. So it says, ancient Edom. So who would this modern Edom be? And the important city of Bosra is singled out because its name means grape gathering. And Isaiah developed a detailed comparison between treading grapes and pouring up blood. Now I actually thought it meant um, like a sheepfold. Batazara. It says sheepfold or fortress. Close your sheepfold. So, 
I'm not sure where that's from. Yeah, you know, I can neither confirm nor deny at this point. Yeah, well, I'll I'll study further on that, Lord William. And he said, and Isaiah developed a detailed comparison between churning grapes and pouring out blood, and that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Wine is actually known as the blood of the grape. Yeah, I think it talks about that in the Apocrypha. It says blood of the grape. Blood of the grape. Look at that at the bottom. She's intoxicated. Right. This is it. Sarah 39 and 25. I'll start from. For the good, a good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners, the principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil and clothing. Why is it um why is it how do we know that this is talking about wine? It says the principal things for the whole use of man's life. So it's is for use of life. Yeah, the blood of the grape. What when you if you were to cut a grape, yeah, make it bleed. What does it bleed? Grape juice. And <laughs> would you turn that into wine? Because it also talks about the same, you know, very similar wording of that in Sirach thirty one and twenty seven. It says wine is as good as life to a man. You know, it's just talking about for the whole use of a you know, man's life. Wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk moderately. What life is then to a man that is without wine? For it, for it was made to make men glad. The wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarrelling. Right, and that's true. You can see that with the, uh, the... The world pushes you know, drunkenness or drunkenness. Being a drunkard as something that's you know, favourable or funny... Or something that you know we should c consistently do. Now the scriptures compare wine to is as good as life to a man. She also said there clearly is a good good use for it, but also expands and gives that just weight there. That you know, if you do it in excess, you do it too too much. You know, I go fuck up. Okay. So verse two. So we went all to that to say what training grapes and pouring out blood. Okay. Verse 2, not 2, not verse 2, but yes, it is 2. It says, the Most High's act, yeah, I might just read it verbatim. God's act of judgment against Edom is clearly conceived to, to be a putting right of the wrong done to Zion, especially since the Edomites took advantage of Judah's weakness during the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians. And that is true. Yeah, that's a good point. Grogan, who I would assume you know, is another so-called scholar, <laughs> Scholarship. He's got. Has he got scholarship? Has Grogan got scholarship? <laughs> That's um another video in itself. Right. So this guy says, and let's see what's this. He, the judgment against E is clearly conceived to be a putting right of the wrong done to Zion. So you just pause for a minute there. Yeah. The the um, the the moral and metric of morality of this world is that. Yeah, two rights don't make a wrong. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> what did Gandhi say? An eye for an eye will make the holy man blind. Yeah, inside joke. But apparently he did say that. Which Yahawashai yeah, expounded upon that law. But it's not Gandhi's place to do such a thing. Right, does Grogan have scholarship? B. I who speak in righteousness mighty to save. This is the Lord Yahweh's reply. To the question in the prophecy. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, he 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 when he says the Lord, yeah, he's talking of um Hamashiach, which really in in certain places there are what's called yeah, oh we don't have scholarship. How about this? A theophany. How about that for scholarship? Yeah, which means simply theos in Greek, which all of that is of the world, man. You're thinking Highly of scholarship, Yahweh Shai wasn't a scholar, man. Of course, he was in terms of he was a student, and he was very adept. If you really want to go to in, into the word itself, on the etims, on the etims, 
but the the connotation and the way you're putting it, scholarship, what do you really mean by that? Scholarship of who? From who? Yeah, who accredits that? That's E, man. Nonetheless, I digress. I so when he say when he's saying the Lord, he's talking of the Messiah, but there's places where you'll read the Lord, yeah, and it's a theophany, it's an appearing theo, theos, God, phenea, yeah, appearing or sight, seeing bright, you know, um, anyway. So he's not he's not necessarily incorrect. Yeah, this when it talks about the Lord, you know, it's it's obviously Hamashiach who's the physical one that's carrying out this prophecy. Yeah, or, or will carry it out. And who's written about in this prophecy carrying out this act. It says he identifies himself by what he says, I who speak in righteousness and what he does, mighty to save. Even in the midst of judgment, in his glory and his strength, he wants men to know is to know he is mighty to save, not only mighty to judge. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um Yeah, so I'll just read this. Yeah, let me just read it in the King James Version, because I'm just more used to hearing that. Not that this version is necessarily necessarily it's very wrong. Let me just get it just so I know what's being said verbatim. Okay, hold on. Certain other versions as well. Will yeah, verse one might be split into verse one and two, so I just want to make sure I I can read it as I know it. But again, yeah, this isn't a doctrine; it's just my preference. Isaiah sixty-three and verse two and three. Where art thou ready in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Okay. In fact, he continues. Right, so I'm going to continue into five and six. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me. And my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger. And make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. So he continues in A. Yeah, And if you want the, the just the breakdown itself. You know, search that up. Isaiah 63. Yeah, put GMS after it. And you'll, you'll find it. If you want it according to what you know, we teach. Or not we, just we as a body. You know, if according to what I believe, what I teach, and that's where you'll find it. You know, you, unless you're one of them that just looks at all the other groups, you know, picks and chooses. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, maybe not that bit though. Yeah, but if you actually want to learn the doctrines we hold to as a body, yeah, that's where you can find it. Why is your apparel red? The prophet asks why the garment of Yahweh is red. Or I'll just read it. The garment of the Lord is red, because obviously. Again, that would be a theophany. That would be an appearing. Similarly, yeah, you'll read um in Genesis one and one that word for God is Allahim. Now that means plural many powers. Alright? And then you'll read something and it might say the Lord God and that God, yeah, Allahim. Why say it's been attributed unto him, the Heavenly Father. Similarly, yeah, when a great job is done by a, a, a team of employees, say ten, yeah, it might get attributed to one of their your managers, and then the great work that the managers do sort of get attributed up the line. You know, why? Because they were the one that set forth the decree. For example, you know, make okay, make um, make five cars, right? You praise the worker, but then you praise the one over him because he's the one that was was making sure the worker had everything that he needed, so on and so forth. So ultimately, all the praise goes back to the heavenly Father. You know, even if we praise Yahweh Shai. Because he is the word of the Heavenly Father. So we understand without without that, yeah, without the Heavenly Father, there couldn't be any begotten son. You know, who begot the Son, the Heavenly Father? Okay. The prophet asks why the garment of the Lord is red, and the Lord answers, I have trodden the winepress alone, their blood is sprinkled upon my garments. This promise is fulfilled. When the Messiah returns to the earth, and this passage is clearly behind passages 
like in behind passages, I think he means, yeah, links up with. He was clothed in a, a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, the with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress of the fairness and wrath of Almighty and power. I say, so even in that, how do how do Christians read it and get come to the understanding, the conclusions they have? And when I say Christians, I mean plantation Christians. You know, what what sweet Jesus strikes nations and rules them with a rod of iron. You can't, you can't take that guy seriously, says Abogia. He's going to rule the whole earth in righteousness. Come on, man. Let's see where he's... Because he's, he's talking about it, but he's not talking about it. And what does it mean? Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments. Let's see if he's... You, do you have a breakdown on that? Bear with me. Because all he said, this, you yeah, know, he's got this scripture, he said this clearly lines up to this, and then just gives a scripture, he doesn't say anything about it. Look at this. In all their affliction he was afflicted is another reason why anti-Semitism is so wicked. Yeah, and what is a Semite? You know, is that an anti-Semitic question? What is a Semite? There's many nations that are Shemitic. Or, yeah, that's the real term you're looking for. Shemitic. Yeah, because they came out of Shem. The Hebrew would be Shem. I mean, in name. So who, came, who, who is a Semite? Anyone that came out of Shem. Also, would the Ishmaelites or the Arabians be considered Shemites or Semitic Semites? You even have a language group. You know, the the um, they'll they'll say, <coughs> excuse me, they'll say Semitic languages. Arabic is a Semitic language. Yeah, let's look that up real quick. All right, so we've got he. Oh, look, man, Hebrew, Arabic, Akkadian, Tigrinya. All right, that's from Eritrea, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least it's spoken there. What did it say? Alright, Tigrinya. It says 18 more. Aramaic, Amharic. Amharic is an Ethiopian language. Okay. Syriac, Tigre. It's probably linked. Oh, it says. That's apparently the same one. I see any of these that I recognize. Now, some of these, yeah, Moabite language, to my knowledge, isn't spoken today. Nor is. What's an Eblamite? Or an Eblayite? Right, a lot of these aren't spoken today, but what is Arabic? Chagrinia? Yeah, I work with someone who speaks that language there. Amharic? Yeah, Tena Yisselin. Yeah, that's a greeting in, in Amharic, okay, in the Ethiopian language. So that's a, that's, the, are they Semites? If you hate Ethiopians, are you an anti-Semite? If you hate Arabs, imagine this, if you're, if you hate Arabs, are you an anti-Semite now? Now is that, can that be applied? According to this, it says Semitic languages, okay. But, you know, David Guzik is actually on point. When he's talking about how he's talking about the Lord's people, yeah, but whether that there is, does that mean Israelites? Because many people, if you follow Judaism, it's an ism, man. It's a religion. It's a way of doing things. Yeah, certain things are correct in it. Is it Judaism? Ism is what, like a belief or a practice or a follow, following a doctrine. Right, so they're just doing isms. They're just doing the way of the tribe of Judah, Yahweh, right, of the southern kingdom, Judaism. 
anyone can convert to Judaism in terms of the belief, but you're talking about a lineage, right? And then you go into the lineage because there was never you know, a, a lineage called Jewish, the, you know, came out of a man Judah, right? And for more than that, you have more than just one tribe, Judah, you have 11 other tribes, man. So you have 12 tribes that make up the, the children of Israel, also known as the Israelites, right? Out of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, they're known as the Israelites. All right, so this is what Christianity says. You know, it's not about this, it's not about that. But David Guzik is allowed to you know, break down. <laughs> He's a top, top scholar, man. He's allowed to break down this, talking about it's about a people group. Why don't you get on him like you get on we? You know, he didn't go into it, man. David Guzik. I'm certainly not pleased with 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 that. Hold on. See, this is the thing, man. First, he atones for our sins alone. Who are you talking about? The whole world. See, right now. When you're breaking this down, how he's how he's getting Edomite blood everywhere, that he's doing, he's atoning for Edomites. Bearing the weight of all our guilt. So is is the Messiah bearing the guilt here of the Edomites that he's stomping out? Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll leave it there. The prayer is edifying. On to the next one. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'asham, Rechak, Kudash, Shalom.